Hey guys, well I'm back here with the TiVo Tornado. This time around we're going to do a couple of the advanced settings. So uh, I've done a couple of the calibration cubes as we saw in the last video and in this one I just just did a brand new calibration cube. My first one had a little bit of elephant's foot on the bottom so it's a little on the squished side. So we'll take this new one off and we'll get the calipers out, we'll measure it up and we'll see if we have to make any adjustments to the E steps for the X, Y or the Z axis. And since we're doing some fine tuning after that, we're gonna do a PID on the hot end. So sit tight, here we go. Hey guys, welcome to where Nerdy is Cool. This is my channel. This is where I cover all my fun projects, whether it be 3D printing, BB-8 building, Stormtrooper, Batman, R2-D2, model rockets, you name it. I mean, there's a bunch of hobbies I have and I've kind of funneled them all into one channel. So, welcome. My name is Paul and uh, as you can see, today we're gonna to be doing a lot of fun stuff here with the 3D printers. I got the TiVo Tornado. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the fine tuning of it. Now, if this is your first time catching one of my videos, be sure to, well, down there in the corner, go ahead and mash the, bu the, mash the button rather, and become a subscriber. You don't wanna miss any of my videos. I have a lot of content out there, so check the video list. That might be something you're interested in. Uh, I have a lot of fun here. I keep it pretty mellow. So uh, definitely thank you for joining, and I hope you continue to join us. Um, that said, uh, don't mind the GoPro right in my face here. We're gonna have uh, uh, multiple cameras going here. So this is the 20 by 20 by 20 cube that just came off the printer. Uh, the reason I did another one is because the one that I did the other day, he's a little squished here on the bottom. Uh, I'm still getting the hang of you know doing the whole uh, bed leveling with the surface and with this printer. Uh, it's, well, you know, any new printer, it takes a little bit of finesse. There's always that one printer that no matter what you do, it prints well, and that seems to be my Ultimaker. But this one's taken me a little bit to get the hang of. So what we're gonna do is we have the X, Y, and Z here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna fire up the caliper here. Let's make sure it's at zero, zero, zero. All right, so first, let's see how close to 20 we came here on the Z axis. And let's see. I mean, you can squish this down here to try to you know, get it lower or higher, but it looks like by default, we're at 19.7, so maybe we can improve that. Okay, next is the, let's see, this is Y down here, so let's look at the Y. Okay, the Y is just over 20, so we're not gonna mess with that one bit. Over here is the X, and let's see how we did on the X. Okay, let's, oops, let's stop wiggling you around here. Okay, keeps on popping off of here. So yeah, so 20.09, I'm not gonna mess with those other two. X and Y are just fine. Uh, there's, oh, I'll hang on here. Let's zero you out here and let's try that one, one more time here. Let's make sure everything was correct. Okay, so we'll do Z first. So Z is roughly 1964. All right, we'll do Y one more time because the caliper might've been a little off. 19.98, let's go with X. Oops, we had a bit here. 20.04. So, as we said, it looks like the, uh, and we'll do one more check. Yeah, so it looks like the, the Z needs a little bit of work, 1961 roughly, so let me jot that down on my little scratch note here, 19.61 on the Z. And what we'll do is we'll figure out the formula for all that to, uh, to fix that. Um, but otherwise, it came up pretty well. So now that I have that one variable, we're going to do a couple of things. I'm going to go out of order a little bit here. I'll do a uh, screen share here with my laptop. But the first thing we're going to do before we start messing with E-steps, I just wanted to do it because I had this, first of all, on the print bed and wanted to get it out of the way. We're going to take the filament uh, out of the printer. And then what we're gonna do is we are gonna connect to the laptop and what we'll do is we'll do the PID. Now, I'm sure you're probably thinking, why bother doing that? Well, the PID, what that does is that's gonna tune the hot end. So basically, what that does is the electronics controls the speed of the, how fast the nozzle heats up. 
and how fast or how it you know continues to maintain the heat. So what we can do is if we run a PID, so what we can do is we can tell um, the, the software, and the, well rather the hardware too, that look, um, we're gonna do a test, we're gonna do 10 loops and we're gonna do a temperature of 210 degrees uh, Celsius because that's the most common temperature I use in my filaments. And what the, uh, <laughs> I'm learning to talk tonight. I got the head cold uh, as well too. Got that from Christina. Um, so what the software is gonna do, it's gonna go through and it's gonna do 10 passes and it's gonna give us those variables we need uh, to, to get this thing to match up for 210 degrees Celsius. So in, if you've ever gone through like with Octoprint or if you've connected with other software, you can see sometimes, you know, where it goes up and down, up and down, up and down, where the printer is, is struggling to maintain temperature or it's either overshooting or undershooting and, and going back and forth. What the PID Auto-Tune is gonna do is it's gonna eliminate that and improve it so that the now that the, the software knows exactly from doing this testing, uh, what it has to do to maintain the temperature. So let's get on with that part. Okay, so got the laptop. I got uh, uh, the cable that came with the TiVo was too short and uh, just it's sheer coincidence that it's green just like the TiVo, uh, this old cord I found. But we're connected to the box and uh, let's, uh, let's see, I have, uh, yep, no temperature outside of the bed. So what we're gonna do, <clears throat> I got my little cheat sheet here because I've done this in the past with my other printers. So uh, what we're gonna do, let me share my screen. Here we go. And uh, what we're gonna do is the command we're gonna do is the M303, which starts the PID process. And we're gonna type, and I have it on uh, caps lock, I think. Here we go. So M303. And we're gonna do extruder zero, because that's our hot end. And we're gonna set the temperature to 210. And we're gonna do this cycles 10 times. And hit send. Okay, we're gonna give this a couple minutes and uh, uh, we're gonna hear the fan cycle up and down, up and down. And uh, it's gonna overshoot, undershoot, overshoot, undershoot. And uh, we'll see what happens with the results. Okay, you gotta kinda dig for it a little bit, but here it is. So this is the... So let's do a quick cut and paste so we can... And that's the default one right there. Okay, so I'm gonna jot this down on my piece of paper down here so that I know that, let's see, it should be uh, P is 20.89. Uh, let's see, I should be 1.66, and D should be 65.89. The reason why I am jotting these down is because what we'll do is we'll go into the firmware uh, that I have stored in here so that uh, the next time I upload the firmware, that these new values are already in there. And as you can see, if we compare, uh, you know, it was. Uh, 20.37 versus 20.89, it was 1.5 versus 1.66, uh, 69.26, uh, now it's 65.89, so uh, very interesting results. Now what we can do, let me uh, scroll here and let me uh, get the verbose stuff here going again so we can see the activity. What we can do is we can store this into the EEPROM with the uh, command, we're gonna do M301, and we're going to do, let's see, P is going to be 20.89 space. I is going to be 1.66. And then in space D will be 65.89. Let's do a little sanity check on that before I push any buttons. 2089. Let's see, 1.66, 65.89. So let's hit send. Sent, okay. And then I can tell it to store it by doing M, oops, down here. Backspace, M500. And let's send that over. Okay, settings have been stored. So very good, there's that. Now let's, uh, I already have this opened up here elsewhere, but uh, uh, let's go ahead with these new values, let me disconnect from this. And what I will do 
I'll give me just a moment to open it up here. Let's go to configuration.h and we're going to scroll way past all this stuff. And we want PID settings. Okay. Now these, let me give you my little notebook here. These are the old ones. So 20.37, 1.5. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to replace these guys. So, and I already have them jotted down on the sheet of paper. So we're going to change that to 8.9. And then we're going to go down to this guy. And we're going to go back, change that to 6, 6. And then we're going to change that to 6, 5.89. Okay, and those are our new values. We want to go up over here and click Save. And then we can go ahead and close out. So the next time we update the firmware or make any changes of the firmware, uh, those changes uh, will go along with it. So we'll go ahead and quit out of here. Let's power off the printer. And unplug it. Printer back on. Can't do a power cycle with the uh, cable still connected to the uh, Arduino board. Okay, that's back. All right, this is connecting. And as you can see, yeah, uh, there it is right there. All right, and just to do one more little double check here. And let me turn off the verbose logging. It's going to log everything if you have it set to verbose. But as we scroll here, we're going to PID settings. And there they are. So our PID settings have been saved to the board using the EEPROM, uh, using the uh, uh, you know, M301, uh, which is where we set it. Uh, M500 is where we tell the system to store it, and then M501 is where we can uh, verify the settings again, it'll display all the settings. So it's there, very good. So that part of the process is over. Now the next one is we have a little bit of math to do. So let me go ahead and crack open the scratch pad here one more time. And let's see, we don't need this stuff anymore, so I can go ahead and clear all this out. Okay, so the calibration cube, and let me just type that up here, calibration cube. Boy, I had the numlock on. Okay, so in order to get that, we need, uh, we gotta do a little bit of math. So it's gonna be the 20 millimeter cube, which we know is 20 millimeter. And then, uh, let's see, we need the current E steps, and I got that a moment ago, and that is 399.29. And then what we do, let me just put a, uh, exactly the nicest math. And then what we do is we uh, divide it by the uh, measured side. And recall that I did that and that was, I wrote it down here, 19.61. And to save, let's see, let's go ahead and pop open uh, calc. Calculator. Okay. So we have uh, 20 millimeter times 399.29. Okay, 7,985.8, and we are going to, where is my division? Division right there, uh, 19.61. Okay, so our E step is gonna be 407.23, and we can do that right through the electronic, uh, right through the uh, interface on here. We just have to make sure we save it. You can also make it part of your G code or your startup script every time. But since I have the ability to manually put it in here and save it, I'm gonna do it that way. All right, so we're gonna make the E step change. We're gonna go into control, motion, steps per millimeter. Okay, we know Z has to go up. And this is gonna take a little while to do. And we're going to store that setting. 
All right. Okay, so as you can see in here, the, uh, the print is underway and uh, we're doing another calibration cube. So this will be number five. Now you may be wondering how come I didn't put the changes uh, to the Z axis into the firmware. Well, I wanna make sure first of all, how well this comes out. If I have to make any further changes, it's kind of senseless to go in there and keep making changes. So what we'll do is that uh, we'll let this print and when it cools off, I will take it off the bed measure and see how close we came. Okay, print's done. Let's uh, pop that off the bed. And I get to the camera going here. I'm uh, still a little bit of elephant foot. I'm still a little too close to the bed, but overall, not a bad print. <clears throat> okay, so we're mostly curious about the Z axis because that's what we're doing the most work on. Let's uh, zero you out. All right. Dun, dun, dun. Push you in, just get you right. So, there it is, 20.05. I don't think I'm gonna argue with that. Let's take a look at the Y, just for, okay, get more on Y. Yep. So, 20.07, and we'll look at X while we're here. Let's stay there. So, 20.11. I don't think I'm gonna argue with those numbers one bit. So, I think what I'll do the next step is going to be, is I'm going to take that E step, the 407.23, and I'm going to add that to the firmware and save it. It's already saved on the box here. So, I will do that and uh, be right back. So, we got it done. So we got the PID, so that's gonna make the hot end a bit more efficient as far as getting to temperature and maintaining it. Now that the software knows, you know, how it's gonna bounce back and forth and recover uh, to maintain temperature, so that's good, that's gonna help. And of course, these calibration cubes mean that the stuff that you print, if you're expecting it to be a certain size, well, you wanna get it as close to that size as possible. Uh, whereas I'm doing things like the BB-8 project and other stuff that I'm printing over multiple printers. I want to make sure that a piece I print on the TiVo Tornado is going to line up and fit with stuff I, I don't know, with stuff I print on the CR-10 or the FT-5 or the Ultimaker or what have you. So it's good to do. Now, if you also want to level up, you could also go on Thingiverse and you could get a 100 millimeter uh, test cube. You could print one of those guys out. And there's all kinds of other things you can do. If you really want to get carried away with this calibration stuff, you can do so. So... But for what I've seen and what I've done over the last day, day and a half, I'm, I'm satisfied with the results I got. Uh, I'm pretty much right at 20, so I'm not gonna argue with one bit. I'm, I'm good with what I got. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope everything I explained made sense. Uh, it's not a terribly hard process. If you have the right software, I use Simplify 3D, for example, as the connection software. You could use Octoprint. You could use a lot of other stuff. So. Just be aware that if you don't have what I had, there's other tools that can do it. On another note, I wanna, if you're a new subscriber or if you're a new viewer, I wanna say thanks. I've noticed our numbers are going up. Our little channel is starting to get a little bit bigger. I love it. I appreciate the feedback and I hope you leave comments in the comment section below to let me know what you think. Also, if you wanna help the channel, there are two ways you can do so. On the YouTube homepage, there's a link right there where it says if you wanna PayPal me or to donate via pay, uh, PayPal, you can hit that. And if you wanna throw me a couple bucks towards coffee or what have you, that's one way to do it. The other way is through Patreon. If you go to www.patreon.com backslash where nerdy is cool, I have a page set up over there. And if you wanna donate, I certainly appreciate it. That's another means you can do so to donors uh, at patreon.com, if they do the $5 a month donation, they have access to the after the upload video I do. Usually a day or two after I make one of these videos, I make a special video just for the Patreon patrons. A little bit of the behind the scenes or some extra things or stuff that might have just got cut out you know, via the editing process. I put it in that little video. So I thank you guys for watching. Until the next time, remember, this is where nerdy is cool.